Welcome back. You might be able to tell that we don't have a windlass on, or an anchor on the boat right now. And that's because we're getting rid of our old Simpson Lawrence 555 and putting on a low friends Tigris. And I had to do some modifications to the windlass bracket and I'm going to have to take it and get it, get it welded up. But here's the basic deal. Um, I took the uh, four stay off the boat and that used to sit here on a weld tab right here. The new electric windlass will go right here. And that lines up with the chain fall into the chain locker down there. The way I had this set up, um, when I did the, uh, when I built the bowsprit, I drilled an epoxy steel, stainless steel tubing in for cross bolts to go through. So we don't have any direct vertical penetrations into the bowsprit that would cause the, uh, the new sprit to rot. Also the way I'm routing the wires, because I don't want to drill a big fat hole down through the middle to snake my wires down below decks. I'm building a riser plate out of G10. That's going to have an internal cable routing area where it'll come down the outside and down this side through a watertight deck gland that goes into where all the control box and everything is and then out to the batteries. Yeah, so. so here's the cable pass through I was talking about and I have to get three wires this diameter through a hole in the deck and keep the water out of the chain locker. And I got one of these, it's a Blue Seas cable clam and it's even got a fancy stainless trim ring. So you got to drill holes through it and they say use a sharp drill bit. And I've tried that before. And what happens is it gets all snagged up and snarled unless you, you could do it in a drill press, but I don't have one. So I got some stainless steel tubing from McMaster car. Like I got a foot of it. It's three eighths outside diameter, as is the cable I got to go through. Uh, the deck. This is the actual rubber stopper that goes in this uh, Blue Seas deck seal. So I got to get three holes through this that are three eighths of an inch in diameter. But I sharpen the ends of the tube and then you just get it wet with a little bit of water. And I put the drill on high speed and it goes through better. And you go through really slow. It comes out like butter. That was a test piece though. Yeah, this is a rubber stopper I got from McMaster to practice on, but so take a screw and I'm gonna have to do this on slow speed. There we go. All right. So once I get ready to, once I drill the hole in the deck and get ready to route the wire after the windlass bracket is modified, then we'll go out and install this thing. But that's how you get a nice clean hole through a rubber stopper like one of these cable clams. They recommend soap. Soap, soap works pretty good. I'm just using water for example, but yeah. Once you get the three things, just slide your wire on in through the plug. And this is a little bit softer material, so it's actually harder to drill than this stuff. This should be, this should be a piece of cake with this thing. But anyway, that's it. All right, so this is where I'm at with this. Uh, I cut both the side flanges off and these were the old mounting studs for the old windlass. Um, what I want to do with this thing is route the wires underneath the windlass so I don't have to drill a hole straight down through the bowsprit. And how I'm going to do that is build it up on a one inch riser block. I've got some half inch thick G10. I'll laminate and uh, make a riser and have a hollow pass through for the wire to wrap around and go through a deck penetration. Then I got a blue C cable clam uh, for the deck penetration for the three wires that come from the motor. I made a template of the bottom of the footprint with the, uh, of the windlass and that, that'll be my G10 pattern. So this thing's actually gonna sit up on blocks like this and the way it's spaced out to make the chain fall correct, it actually has to be offset a little bit off center and then I'll have long studs welded to the plate. I got some uh, stainless steel angle. This is all the whole brackets 316 stainless and I'm going to cut some pieces, cut some short sides for the bracing and for the bolt, uh, the through bolt for the uh, this side in the of the chain fall. So some short chunks of this on this side 
and on this side so that these back bolts hit on the windlass. And also, I have enough of this to cut two pieces and weld them back to back and create a, P a T piece like this. And that's actually gonna go on the back of the windlass, actually on the back of the windlass bracket right here. And it's gonna extend out about four inches beyond into the inside of the Samson post. Between the Samson posts is where the tab for the, uh, the inner force stay and the, there'll be another hole back here for the tack pennant on the uh, staysail. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I need to do some hacking away on metal bolts and nuts and stuff for all this. Once I get it all jigged up and have a pattern for my welder, he can put it all together based on all my cutting and everything. Cause I'd like to do most of the fabrication to kind of save cost. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks. Thank you.